Hey, welcome back to the Junior Small P channel for some gold and silver economic news and discussion. There's a pile of articles, a lot of information that hit in the last uh, two days or so. We're going to have to work our way through it. There's no way to read all of the articles. So I've got the uh, highlights, some clips, some good charts to take a look at, and uh, different ideas, opinions of where things are headed that we can consider. So here we look at precious metals this morning. Uh, gold rebounded from a low as the dollar weakened. We've got silver at 16.97. It's down 1.14% this morning, down 19 cents, 19.6. So just about 20 cent drop in silver. Gold fell about 11.80, or it's down 11.80, about 0.88%, sitting at 13.2740. We've got copper up. We've got platinum also down five bucks, and palladium down 12.60, uh, down a full percent there, 1.14% for palladium. Taking a look at the gold chart for this morning, over the last day, these are one-hour candles you're looking at. Uh, two significant sell-offs we see there. And this pushed the price of gold down to $1,326.34 here in this screenshot that was taken just earlier. Silver also seeing two fairly significant sell-offs. Uh, pushing it down below the $17 mark once again. Really struggling to maintain above $17 an ounce. We're sitting at $16.89 now. Uh, looks like it's in the process of being sold off currently. These are, again, one-hour candles we're looking at. So for about the last four hours overall, we've seen uh, silver in a state of being sold off here. As you all are familiar, there's that term that the little crypto guys have come up with over the last couple of years called holding or hodling. I think gold guys and silver guys, we pretty much invented that mindset. Holding on even with the beat down and even with the price rise. We just hold and weather all the storms. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you have experienced it. And there's some articles coming up now that point to why holding Hodling, whatever you want to use as the term, is so important, especially with precious metals. And why you need to buy when they're getting beat down, like right now, or when they're being held back. A precise target for dollars plunge. This is just a snapshot in time. Of course, this might not be a permanent trend, but we've seen the dollar taking quite the beating, quite a decline. And I think it's going to go further. Overall, over time, as you will see, I really believe the dollar eventually uh, will make headline news as the rotting leper fiat currency, the garbage debt paper that it truly, truly is. And here we see a dollar index. And the author of this article says he's looking for the dollar to bound for a potentially tradable low at 88.29. So 88.29 basis points below. That's, uh, again, below 90 there. Overall weakening trend here with the U.S. dollar. It could go lower. I would like to see the dollar hitting the 60s, the 50s, and continue where it needs to eventually go, which is ultimately zero. So here you can see it declining. This uh, gentleman predicting 88.29 as a tradable low soon. And all of you here on the channel know that that will mean metal prices should rise during that period. The 91.57 downside target we were using for the dollar looked promising as a place for a powerful bounce to occur. Instead, sellers crushed it on Friday, putting in play a significantly lower target at 88.29 that I would rate as almost certain to be reached. If so, it would add 2.9% to the dollar indexes so far, 12.4% decline from the 103.82 high recorded a year ago. It would also undoubtedly quicken the inflation drumbeat we've been hearing recently from the usual benighted sources, i.e. the news media, professional economists, and talking heads. I expect my new target, a clear and compelling hidden pivot support to resist sellers for a while, at least. But if it gives way relatively quickly and by that I mean within a day or two of first being touched, I would infer that the U.S. dollar is headed significantly lower. At the same time, we could expect to see continuation 
of some big trends, including lower prices for treasury bonds and notes and higher prices for stocks, crude oil, precious metals, and of course, eh, Bitcoin. So there you go. A little prediction there. That's a pretty detailed uh, explanation of possible behavior going into the future based on the performance of the U.S. dollar. I value that type of information. I think it's one of those uh, things you don't hear about enough when you're looking at the topics that we try to cover. Like I said, we've got some good information coming out today. This is some good articles, uh, the kind of stuff you guys really value. Look at this. China downgrades U.S. credit rating from A- to triple B+. Warns U.S. insolvency would detonate next crisis. That should be obvious, of course. If the U.S. economy uh, has a severe, a severe problem, it typically reflects upon the entire world economy. This information comes from our friend Tyler Durden over at Zero Hedge in its latest reminder that China is a for now happy holder of some $1.2 trillion in U.S. Treasury's Chinese credit rating agency, the Gong downgraded U.S. sovereign ratings from A- to triple B-plus overnight, citing deficiencies in U.S. political ecology and tax cuts that, quote, directly reduce the federal government's sources of debt repayment, unquote, weakening the base of the government's debt repayment. Oh, and just to make sure the message is heard loud and clear, the ratings, which are now level with those of Peru, Colombia, and Turkmenistan on the Beijing-based agency's scale of credit worthiness have also been put on a negative outlook. In a statement on Tuesday, Dagong warned that the United States' increasing reliance on debt to drive development would erode its solvency. Quoted by Reuters, Dagong made specific reference to President Donald Trump's tax package, which is estimated to add $1.4 trillion U.S. dollars over a decade to the $20 trillion national debt burden. Quote, deficiencies in the current U.S. political ecology make it difficult for the efficient administration of the federal government, so the national economic development derails from the right track. Unquote. DeGong said, adding that, quote, massive tax cuts directly reduce the federal government's sources of debt repayment therefore further weaken the base of government's debt repayment, unquote. So China not looking too friendly upon the United States economic situation or the president's tax plan. It doesn't matter who's really in office or what plan they come up with. We are dealing with decades, a century, as, as a matter of fact, a century and a quarter now almost, of massive overspending, uh, stimulus, wars, just debt, huge debt, entitlement, welfare, warfare state. This is the resume that a century of inept, incompetent politicians have left us. This is the legacy. This is the, the dynasty that the Congress and the executive branch has allowed to take place here in the United States. The U.S. government's basically walking around clutching a thermal detonator like Boba Fett. Here's another quote from the Chinese rating firm. The virtual solvency of the federal government would be likely to become the detonator of the next financial crisis. And get this, in a preemptive shot across the bow in the coming trade wars, last week Bloomberg reported that Beijing officials reviewing China's vast foreign exchange holdings had recommended slowing or halting purchases of U.S. Treasury bonds. That warning spooked investors worried that sharp swings in China's massive holdings of U.S. Treasuries would trigger a sell-off in bond and equity markets globally. The report sent U.S. Treasury yields to a 10-month high and the dollar lower. Although China's foreign exchange regulator has since dismissed the report as, quote, fake news. Still, De Gong was quick to point out that not much would be needed to crush the public's confidence in the value of U.S. Treasuries. The market's reversing recognition of the value of U.S. Treasury bonds and U.S. dollar 
will be a powerful force in destroying the fragile debt chain of the federal government, unquote, De Gong said. Incredible. This is very interesting developments, my friends. I hope you're still tuned in and paying attention. I know this is the most boring channel on YouTube, but bear with me. A bloodbath for bonds. Here's the tipping point to look out for. First, Japan, and now China, is getting markets, notably the bond world, stirred up. Bonds are the topic du jour, especially after the Bank of Japan got everyone a bit worked up yesterday by trimming its government bond purchases. Then, this morning, Bloomberg reported China is considering cutting back on its U.S. Treasury holdings. So this kind of piggybacks on the last article, same information, just from a different outlet and a different angle. So take all that information about China's view of the U.S. dollar treasuries and where we might be going in the future, and then look at their behavior. What are they doing? Chinese physical gold investment demand surges, while Americans pile into stock and crypto bubbles. As you all know, I didn't cover it because I never really care, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it keeps hitting these all-time highs, which is great because it hit an all-time high in about 2007. And from that point, it shedded about 40 or 50% of its value. So just because the Dow is sitting at an all-time high doesn't mean that it's going to keep going in that particular direction. Chinese demand for physical gold investment surged in the first three quarters of 2017 while Americans ditched the shiny yellow metal for increased bets in the crypto mania and stock market bubble market. Even though China's Hang Seng stock market outperformed the Dow Jones index last year, Chinese citizens purchased the most gold bar and coin products, quarter one through quarter three, 2017, since the same period in 2013, when they took advantage of huge gold market price sell-off. According to the World Gold Council, Chinese gold bar and coin demand increased to 233 metric tons in the first three quarters of 2017, compared to 162 metric tons in the same period last year. Furthermore, if we include Indian gold bar and coin demand, China and India consumed nearly half of the world's total. And then there's Russia. We've talked about Russia, right? You remember that. Here we go, global gold and bar demand. Quarter 1 through quarter 3, 2017, China and India gold bar and coin demand of 338 metric tons accounts for nearly half of the total global 715 metric tons from quarter 1 through quarter 3, 2017. Got to put the visual up. This is kind of like uh, the digital crayon drawing for those that don't understand the words and need a visual to go along with it. I'm in that category, so no offense, don't take offense to that, because I need a visual. I need someone to break out the crayons, draw me a picture, so I can get what we're talking about. And there I can see it. There is China, look at that, 233 metric tons. There's India, 105 metric tons. Add those two up, boom, you've got almost half of the total world gold demand. Absolutely incredible. And then you got the U.S. on the far right. Yeah, we don't buy precious metals much. We sit and watch Dancing with the Stars, eating TV dinners, and contemplating our navel, because that is us, the Americans, the booger eaters, the window lickers. We put crayons in our nose, don't contemplate much. Here you go, we've got the, if we compare gold bar and coin demand by these countries in the same period, last year, we can see some interesting changes. Here you've got China and India, gold bar and coin demand of 262 metric tons, accounting for 42% of the total global 631 metric tons from quarter one through quarter three, 2017. What I really noticed there, significant drop on the U.S. and U.S. buying much less gold. And as the author mentioned at the beginning of the article, Americans shunned gold to make it rich in the rapidly rising stocks and crypto markets. We can see this quite clearly as investors choose to bet on the Dow Jones index as it surged 30% last year versus a mere 13.5% for gold. Even though 13.5% is, that's respectable. More than you're gonna get in a CD. If you start putting all these puzzle pieces together, you should get a pretty clear picture of what we are looking at globally. 
Here you have Russia and China considering a return to the gold standard. This is from Sputnik News, January 16th, 2018. China and Russia have been accelerating and stockpiling their purchases of physical gold as well as stepping up global acquisitions of mining operations. The precious metal at present remains the biggest single danger to the hegemony of the dollar. According to the publication, China and Russia have engaged in an aggressive buildup of their gold reserves over the last decade, growing from about 400 tons in 2007 to 3,670 tons today. 1,842.6 tons for China and 1,828.6 tons for Russia, respectively, according to the World Gold Council. The news keeps coming. Chinese business news and analysis portal BW Chinese has outlined how, in addition to the petro yuan, China and its Russian partners can go about creating a real global alternative to the U.S. dollar. According to the portal, China and Russia use of yuan-denominated crude oil futures will help promote the ascendancy of the renminbi. And although China's weight in the crude oil market is not by itself sufficient to shake the global dominance of the petrodollar, its status as the world's largest crude oil importer will certainly help solidify the petro yuan's positions with even U.S. energy companies showing interest in exporting shell oil to the Asian economic powerhouse. At the same time, BWC asserts that apart from the creation of a non-dollar denominated environment for oil trade, both Russia and China are also stepping up their exploration and acquisition of physical gold reserves, hedging against the implications of a possible collapse of the de facto world currency. In his interview with RT, Manley emphasized that gold is essentially the only monetary asset available to Russia and China which can provide independence from the dollar. And given the fact that the precious metal can be purchased from a variety of sources, both countries may actually have stockpiles of gold many times the size of their official reserves if China and Russia manage to collectively accumulate more of the precious metal than the U.S., which is estimated to hold about 8,133.5 tons. This would serve as a major, if symbolic, blow to both the dollar and the position of the U.S. and the global economy in general. Well, U.S. better get on it. I don't even think the U.S. can effectively prove that they hold 8,133.5 tons. I think it's all been contracted out. What lesson are you taking from this so far? We're not even done yet. I can't wait to hear the comments that scream, No, but it's fake news. This is fake news. I don't believe it. America's the greatest country on earth. We're not going to get to it with nothing. We're the best. We're the best there ever was. Well, while you dip your grease and salt-covered fingers back into a bowl of potato chips while watching the Super Bowl, just know that I've been accused of fake news and all of these articles have before. Eventually, the stories that were reported and proclaimed by people like that as fake news, turned out to be true. Remember the whole Germany gold situation? Well, here you go. BWC pointed out that even key U.S. ally, Germany, recently made the decision to repatriate its gold from vaults in New York City and Paris last year, possibly in part due to concerns that the dollar may have lost its once rock-solid credibility. When that news first broke and was first being rumored, a lot of people didn't believe it would happen, and a lot of people believed it was fake news. This is back before even fake news was a term. They just didn't think it was going to happen. They didn't think it was real. And a lot of the news about it made it look like it was going to happen a lot later in the future than Germany, covertly or whatever you want to call it, uh, expedited the process and acquired their gold physically much sooner than anticipated. Today, the analysts said China and Russia openly list their gold as a strategic monetary asset, while the United States has continually sought to underestimate the strategic value of the precious metal because, at present, it remains the biggest single danger to the hegemony of the dollar. Germany-based U.S. economist F. William Engdahl recently wrote about Russia 
and China's efforts to create an alternative to the dollar, including a gold-backed international currency or even several similar currencies, and how these efforts will help to prevent Washington and Wall Street from pumping up another Greece-style bond crisis to force countries that have a trade surplus to invest in U.S. Treasury securities. Piggybacking on top of all that information, I found a very lengthy article, very long, and here is the title for it if you wish to go and read the entire thing. I would encourage you to do so. A lot of gems of history and economic news within it. I took some highlights from it. The title, Silver as a Strategic Metal and Why Prices Will Soar. Many of you are already versed and familiar with why silver will most likely see an acceleration in its valuation here going into the future. But let's take a look at this article now. He points out several things. The money supply, the past financial crisis, and then he gets to this chart here. No single graph demonstrates the failure of monetary policy more than this money velocity horrendous decline. That is why it never appears in the Wall Street Journal or New York Times, but the Golden Jackass site shows it periodically as a measure of failure when the toxic vat of the U.S. Fed balance sheet reverses along with those of the central banks, the flow will be from sovereign bonds like the U.S. T-bond into gold bullion. The trend will be to replace the global banking reserves with hard assets like gold bullion. Both gold and silver will become monetary metals. However, a whiff of something very new and refreshing is in the wind. Silver might instead become a core strategic asset for the energy sector, thus binding with the monetary role of gold. The global rebellion will take place in the form of trade payment done outside the U.S. dollar and sharp reductions in U.S. Treasury bond held in banking systems. When the U.S. dollar loses the bulk of its global currency reserve status, its privileges and deep advantages will fall away. The people will not recognize the lost reserve factor, but they will surely notice the powerful, profound, pervasive effects. They will come in the form of price inflation, entering the room from the imported channels. They will come in the form of supply shortage from rejection of U.S. T-bills in trade payment at port facilities. They will come in the form of social disorder as a result of inflation and shortage. Think of Venezuela, my friends. The public response will be a vast torrent to purchase silver in protection, which could become a matter of survival. The more wealthy will prefer to protect their fortunes with gold. In times of great crisis, expect silver to be used to purchase the standard items like food, fuel, and rent. Expect gold to be used to purchase cars, homes, and businesses. The coming crisis from the lost U.S. dollar reserve status is inevitable. It demands preparation. It will mark an important turning point in U.S. history. And I would add in world history uh, to that as well. Now I've done little pep talks on precious metals for you guys in the past, especially during dramatic sell-offs or periods of uh, prolonged suppressed prices. Here's a pep talk that he writes about, and I'll start up partway through this paragraph. We read, If one has physical metals stored and understands the inherent control with its direct access at any given moment, it has been and remains the safest way to protect wealth from the current powerful debasement. While people rush into cryptocurrencies, they need to realize that cryptocurrencies are not crypto money yet. Once hard asset backed crypto money is issued, it will be backed by primarily precious metals structured on the blockchain technology. Crypto money will wipe the floor with cryptocurrencies and billions will be lost in the process. This is a very interesting point, so hopefully you're still here. The voice gave emphasis as follows. Let me tell you something that you can take to the bank and the vault, 
The day is close when you will not be able to get any physical metal, and furthermore, its price will go into the stratosphere. Blockchain and cryptocurrencies are here to stay. However, cryptocurrencies will fall to the wayside, pushed out by crypto money. There are people who are putting crypto money structures in place that are based on blockchain technology. They will make precious metals fungible, along with other valuable commodities. This means a de facto democratization of money free from any government manipulation, but most importantly, free from inflationary debasement. This will constitute the return to sound money. People who do not understand this concept, following the herds of whatever hype, will get their clock cleaned big time. The Bitcoin advocates must be careful to secure their exits in converting to spendable money. The recent crypto craze is a manifestation of the U.S. dollar being debased. We've talked about that, covered that, and I've pushed that point here. What we witness is hyperinflation. One is forced to spend more and more dollars to acquire the array of alternative currencies. You can pause and read this entire screen if you wish to, but I want to read the last few sentences. Okay, We are seeing it all unfold during the global paradigm shift. The disorder could go out of control with wider war as the gold standard in its many parts and several platforms come into view. We're seeing nations rising in debt, world debt rising three times as fast as global wealth. Major changes are taking place, deals are taking place, nations are working together. We're seeing a movement away from the U.S. dollar, not only at the nation state level with Russia and China trying to come up with alternatives, but also people. You're seeing, just like as we saw in that last article, a run. People are running away from fiat, running away from the dollar, and they're trying to do anything they can to spend their dollars as quickly as possible to acquire either cryptocurrencies, precious metals, or even invest them. That is a sign that a dollar, a currency for that matter, is weak and dying. It's diseased. I hope you found today's information valuable. I hope that you can share it, like it, throw a comment down below. This is why the channel is here. This is why it exists. Thank you all for your support, your ongoing motivation, and uh, keeping an open mind. As you notice there, he did make points that I think are valuable for some of you to hear. And there was a time where I didn't think cryptos were going to be here forever. And he made a point that they are. Cryptocurrencies, blockchain, it's here, it's here to stay. Now, he also sees and agrees that at some point, they might be blended in or somehow facilitate working with precious metals and other commodities. I think that is very possible. So try to keep an open mind with that. And, you know, don't, uh, don't go out and die on some ideological battlefield that is unnecessary. Something's happening. Something is changing. So pay attention to all of it. All right. Thank you all for being here, participating on the Junior Small P channel. I appreciate it. And glad we could have this time once again looking at the news.